political brown kid here, and I've been making videos about Joe Biden and why we should not vote for him. We should not vote for Trump either. I've already told y'all none of the above. Write in some candidates' names. But I'm going to tell you specifically why you should not re-elect Joe Biden. Because, to be honest with you, I think this is a very pathetic thing. And I think that it's very disrespectful to the American public what's going on with Joe Biden. And so I'm just going to run down four points why no one should vote for Joe Biden. And why Joe Biden and thus the Democrats deserve to lose the White House in 2024. The first reason I think is pretty obvious, and that's progressive cognitive decline. Listen, most individuals are going to suffer from progressive cognitive decline. And to what degree each of us go through that, whether some of us get dementia, Alzheimer's, or whether some of us just, you know, you just have, you just go into old age and you just start dropping little subtle memories or just become a little bit slower in your thought process. It happens to everyone. However, with Joe Biden, if you paid attention to him from four years ago in the 2020 um, campaign to the election to now, to this point right now in 2024, there has been a significant drop off in Joe Biden as far as um, his the way he looks, the way he moves and the way he talks and speaks and thinks and processes things. He can't even navigate steps. If you watch the debate, his wife had to literally help him navigate some steps to go up and down. Um, and, and that's just mobility, but just you can see even in debates and not even just in the debates when he talks, just his forgetfulness, um, the way he's rationalizing and processing things, it's not good. And so you may say, OK, well, he's going to have aides and consultants that can help him out. I kind of agree with you because, look, Ronald Reagan, that racist, we all know that he was drawing cartoons during um, meetings and he wasn't doing much work. Probably the White House was being run by somebody else under um, um, Ronald Reagan, the racist Ronald Reagan, should I um, throw in. But with Joe Biden and even with any other president, when you go into a room and have to negotiate with Vladimir Putin, or you maybe have to negotiate and talk to Kim Jong-un, or you just have to talk to any other world leaders, you're not going to, and you get into a room and have to have discussions and try to either convince, persuade, or present a particular position, and um, how well is he going to be able to fare against other leaders, and how well are they going to respect him? And then once they see a vulnerability in your leadership, you know, it, it's just like when you're looking at the animal kingdom. If you ever watch movies, once the once the alpha male or even the alpha female, once the others see a weakness and an opportunity to move in and take that position, they definitely do so. When the alpha, whether it's alpha male or female, once that alpha is weakened in the animal kingdom or shows a weakness, the other ones that have that um, that have that desire to move up in the ranks, they definitely take advantage. And you're definitely going to see that from other countries if they start seeing weakness in our leadership. So that's with the cognitive de um, decline. That's number one. The second point, um, which I think is one of the bigger ones, is just the entitlement overall. And that's what's really ticked me off with the American process. I get tired of hearing people say, well, you have to vote for one or the other. And then if you start talking about not voting at all or penciling in someone else's name, then you start hearing all of this stupidity from other people talking about, well, you know, those other part independent parties can't win. You know, the right ends can't win. You have to vote for either a Democrat or Republican, because if you don't vote for this person then the other person's going to win. Well, that shows the patheticness of American democracy, which I'm going to circle back to, because if that's the case, then we really have no choice. If you have to understand this, when when candidates run for election, it is already predetermined. Um, those candidates are already vetted by um, your millionaires and billionaires. 
you know, before they even run for election, they're, they're discussing way before like 2024, they're discussing in 2022, 2023, and they're galvanizing the financial base to see who's going to back me and get the funding for me to run. So really, you have no choice. Once those candidates have been established um, in the primaries, then that's the choices that you really have from. So we as the American public, now we're given two old people. We're given um, Donald Trump, who's just self-adulating, and he's just, he can't get out of his own way. He's too ignorant to pick Nikki Haley as his VP. He's still out here not making um, concrete statements and providing you with specific solutions on how he's going to, um, how his second um, opportunity at presidency is going to go. He's just throwing out things like it's going to be big, it's going to be grand. He's not even providing you with any substance. And he's too, like I said, too arrogant to pick Nikki Haley, who would make an outstanding running mate. And he's making foolish statements. And he's 78 years old. And then you have um, Joe Biden, who's just old and looks very pathetic and should not be running at all. So my thing is, why should we have to be picking from those two? And the problem, what I mean with entitlement is, Joe Biden thinks that just because he's the current president that he's entitled to have or entitled to be the nominee for the 2024 um, election. And that's just simply not the case. When you look at other um, areas, and now I'm going to move into the third point when I talk about meritocracy. And when you look at sports, and sports is a prime example of meritocracy, the best players start once you, once you start aging out in your sport and you start declining, uh, your, your boss or even the fan base and even the analysts say, this player needs to sit down. This player's time has come. They said it about Kobe when Kobe was playing and Kobe started going down. Allen Iverson went to the bench. A lot of people move to the bench once you stay past your prime. And, and those teams that don't move on, like prime example, you can look at the Pittsburgh Steelers with Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger stayed a little bit longer and his arm wasn't as sharp. He wasn't as mobile as he used to be. You saw the effects that it had on the team. Yeah, mentally he may have still been there, but physically he couldn't do what made Ben Roethlisberger Ben Roethlisberger. And so that's when you say, that's when you see coaches, GMs, and owners say it's time for us to move on and draft a newer, younger, fresher player or, or acquire another player via trade that can make this position better. And we need to do that definitely with the presidency. We want to look at every other area. We look at sports and tell people they're too old to play. But we look at the president of the United States, which is probably the most um, powerful position in the world, and we just say, oh, well, it's ageism. You can't discriminate against someone for their age. No, we're not necessarily discriminating against them because he's 81, 82 years of age. We're discriminating against him because he is in mental decline. That is why we are looking at him saying he needs to bow out. And when you think about it, Four years from now, if he gets reelected, where is his mental state going to be in 2026, 2027? We don't need him in the White House at that point in time. He has it's, This is not like sports where if a player is showing mental decline, you can during week 18 of the season or at the game um, 38 of the NBA season, you can cut him, wave him, or move him out. You're pretty much stuck with him unless he decides to... to um, bow out on his own, or he passes away. And that's the problem with the White House position right now. You know, it's not a, this is not a, um, it's not meritocracy. It's not a meritocracy. He is just feels, well, going back to entitlement, he just feels as though he can stay. But technically, we should be looking for someone to say, we need someone else. And this is the failure of the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, that they should have saw this coming back in 2022, 2023. And they should have been saying, look, by the time 2024 comes around, 
Joe Biden is going to be of X particular age. We've been seeing the decline from 2021 to, to I mean, from 2020 till now. They should have been pressing to say, we want other candidates to run and we want to have a true runoff in the Democratic primary. We want, we're going to force a Democratic primary and we're encouraging five or six of the candidates to come forward. So this should have been another job interview for um, Joe Biden to earn that spot back to be reelected. Because I guarantee you and me, if we were on our jobs and we were forgetting things, moving slower, you know, showing mental decline on our jobs, you know what our jobs would do with us? They would either you know, um, downgrade our work, give us fewer and fewer tasks to do, our performance um, reviews would suffer for it, or they would either move on from us totally, write us up, find a justification to, you know, terminate us from our position, or they would encourage us to, you know, um, put in our retirement papers or um, suffer termination. That's what they would do with us. And the Democratic National Committee is a failure, and they fail to invoke um, a meritocracy in this portion while not having a true um, um, primary for the Democrat um, presidency back in tw back in um, 2024 or even what should we say 2023 when the candidates appear. The final point, and I'm kind of circling back, it's just for democracy period, for the democracy of the United States, because this is a slap in the face to all American citizens that you know, we do not really have a choice. We really don't. So if you don't really have a choice, you really don't have a voice. I mean, if, if those individuals here, I mean, if you're out there voting and you wanted to see, well, maybe, you know, um, we would have loved to have seen, let's just say Kamala Harris, you know, replace him. Or we would have loved to have Gavin Newsom or maybe even bring back Bernie said whoever the Democratic candidate you wanted to see, you were denied and robbed of a choice to um, have your voice heard and to really um, have a true election process. Instead, you were just given a candidate to vote for. The one thing about the Republican um, Party is or the Republican side is. You know, they chose Donald Trump and, I, you know, I'm surprised that they even did that. I'm disturbed that they did that. I'm disappointed that they did that. Um, I would have rather seen someone else. Really, when I looked at the um, Republican primary, I really didn't like any of the candidates except for really Nikki Haley. I, I wondered why Marco Rubio was absent, wondered why Ted Cruz was absent. Those candidates would have been way better than looking at Tim Scott, looking at... Um, Vivek um, Ramaswamy, I hope I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, I apologize. But I'm um, looking at him and looking at that other guy. I forget the other guy's name. And um, Chris Christie didn't even really have a chance, in my personal opinion. So really, it was just really between Trump and Nikki Haley. But at least those, at least it was a free runoff. Those two um, chose to run this time ran. Last time they had about 16 or 17. That was in 2020. 16 or 17 people ran. This time it was only about six, five or six that was notable and that made the debate stage. But at least they had a true process. But now we're back with Joe Biden and Donald Trump, which to me is pathetic. And it robs me as a citizen um, of, you know, being able to pick from some viable candidates. And it's robbing a bunch of other citizens as well. So that's just my opinion on why we should really not vote for um, Joe Biden again in 2024. He should be nowhere near the White House. The only time he should be near the White House is when he comes as a visitor, if he chooses to do so. So once again, this is the Political Brown Kid. I'm out of here.